This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. YouTube has demonetized almost all of my recent videos, so if you're able, please consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash secondthought. The world is now in its fourth month of dealing with its most recent pandemic. Since coronavirus was declared a pandemic on March 11th, 2020, we've seen the virus ravage countries around the world, and in typical American fashion, we just had to be the best at mishandling the crisis. Over the last few months, I, and many other concerned Americans, begged people to listen to the experts, stay inside, wear their masks, in the hopes that maybe we could avoid a second wave. To the bafflement of the rest of the world, safety precautions that are empirically proven to help prevent the spread of disease are considered a political opinion in the US. Thanks to a combination of our cult of capitalism and weaponized idiocy of a certain type of person, the United States has officially made the situation far worse than it ever needed to be. The president, business people, and state-level officials begging for people to be sacrificed on the altar of the market. Rabid conservatives decrying masks as a plot to steal their freedom. Just look at this chart. Consecutive days of record numbers of new cases. See the other developed nations at the bottom of the chart? Remember how news pundits were saying that the high number of cases in Europe was because of socialized medicine? They're pretty quiet now, aren't they? It's almost as if the existence of a profit motive in healthcare discourages proper handling of a pandemic. But this video isn't about the efficacy of different types of healthcare. In this episode, we're going to talk about the drug Remdesivir, the pharmaceutical company Gilead, and the absolute depravity of how they've chosen to price one of the only COVID treatments in existence. Once upon a time, the US had a rule that required pharmaceutical companies to charge reasonable prices for the drugs they developed with the help of government funding. That was 25 years ago, and the rule was rescinded by President Bill Clinton. Despite the best efforts of more progressive lawmakers, Democrats and Republicans came together to crush any opposition, and thus paved the way for the last two and a half decades of skyrocketing drug prices in America. In more recent years, President Obama refused to force drug companies to lower their prices, and the GOP blocked legislation that would have let Medicare negotiate for lower prescription drug prices. Get the picture? This isn't a one party or the other thing. The neoliberal consensus as it exists in America demands the absolute freedom of corporations to seek ever higher profits, free from the shackles of government regulation. This is great news for pharma executives and shareholders, who stand to make millions of dollars off runaway drug prices, and the politicians who enable this racket accept generous donations to their re-election campaigns from these same people. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. The United States has the highest drug prices in the world, often by a very wide margin. In Canada, a vial of insulin costs $21. The same product, produced in the same factory, costs $450 in the US. If you have type 1 diabetes and no insurance, you're looking at $3,000 a month just to stay alive. There's a reason we see so many GoFundMe campaigns for medical issues in the United States. The vast majority of people simply can't afford the life-saving drugs they need. But surely some concessions would be made during a pandemic, right? If people aren't able to work or have been laid off and lost their insurance, there must be some way for those affected by the virus to get by. If you haven't been completely hoodwinked by the propaganda of patriotism, you probably won't be surprised to learn that no, there have been no considerations made for the 40 plus million Americans out of work in the middle of a plague. Can't afford your medication? You can either A, die, or B, go into such tremendous debt that you'll lose your life savings, your home, and all your possessions. And that brings us to the drug Remdesivir. Developed by the American company Gilead, Remdesivir has proven to be an effective way to treat coronavirus in hospitalized patients. It has no effect on mortality rates, but for those who do recover, the drug tends to shorten the recovery time by about four days in the hospital, or 31%. The treatment consists of a five-day series of IV drips, utilizing six vials of remdesivir. The cost of those vials? $520 each, for a total cost of $3,120. There's also a reduced government price, which applies to a very limited number of people, and does not include those on Medicare or Medicaid, those most vulnerable to getting seriously ill from the disease. The price for those lucky few? $390 per vial, for a total cost of $2,340. So, in the middle of a pandemic, with tens of millions of people without insurance or a paycheck, the only available treatment costs two to three thousand dollars. That is absurd. But bear with me, it gets much worse. Gilead CEO Daniel O'Day, who was paid a cool $29.1 million last year, and whose company raked in $5.4 billion in profits, has been trying to spin his pricing plan as a selfless act for the good of the people. What I want to assure you, Meg, is that uh, at, at both of those prices, uh, we focused on making sure that, uh, that all patients would have access. And based upon, you know, this price level, 
Whether you're covered by a private insurer, whether you're covered by a government insurer, whether you're uninsured uh, with COVID-19, uh, there will not be an issue with access for remdesivir. Here's the thing. O'Day seems to have a very different definition of affordable than most average Americans. For perspective, 40% of Americans couldn't afford a surprise $400 expense before the pandemic. Remember that price per vial? 40% of Americans couldn't pay for one single day's worth of remdesivir. How are they supposed to afford five days of that, on top of the incredibly expensive hospital stay? For most people, it's just not possible. You may be thinking, yeah, it's expensive, but this isn't a charity. The company has to recoup their R&D costs. First of all, that's a sickening mindset when so many are suffering. But to play your game, let's look at a couple of facts. First, the cost of developing remdesivir was offset considerably by tens of millions of taxpayer dollars through the government. Second, a group of experts crunched the numbers and found that Gilead could turn a profit by charging just $10 for the treatment. $10, 300 times less than what they're charging. If you think that sounds completely evil, yeah, I'd say so too. But if you're expecting a pharmaceutical company to act with the barest shred of compassion or basic human decency, you'll be sorely disappointed. Okay, but what about a generic version of the drug? It's not uncommon to see cheaper copycat drugs hit the market as an alternative to pricey brand names. You're right, that would make the situation much less grim. Gilead thought of that. They decided they'd rather not allow people the option of buying a cheaper version, so they signed a deal preventing the distribution of any generic form of remdesivir in dozens of countries around the globe, including the world's poorest nations. They also attempted to monopolize the production of the drug in order to maximize their already massive profits. These ghouls would literally rather let millions of people suffer and die than lose out on a single dollar of profit. This behavior is sickening, and the people are right to be outraged. After all, the development of the treatment was funded by tens of millions of taxpayer dollars. We've already paid for the drug. At the very least, it should be affordable. And really, it should be completely free given the circumstances. Are you angry yet? I can keep going. While other countries around the world have worked hard to flatten the curve and get their cases under control, the U.S. has acted like the spoiled child it is and completely mishandled the situation. As global cases decline in most developed countries, thanks to effective planning, testing, and prevention measures, the U.S. said, screw it, this is too hard. Everybody ignore the problem and go back to work. States reopened, ignorant Americans flocked to bars and restaurants, entitled people through fits at the suggestion that they should wear a mask. And guess what happened? Cases exploded. We're worse off now than ever. Instead of doing the responsible thing and enacting a true lockdown, the federal government has dragged its feet, conservative talk show hosts have continued to peddle conspiracy theories about the virus, and state officials have refused to slow reopening measures. The nation seems to have accepted its fate. Hundreds of thousands will die, but who gives a shit? Taking decisive action is too hard. The only thing the U.S. has done in response to the explosion of cases is to buy up almost every single dose of remdesivir for the next three months. The United States now owns the world's entire supply of remdesivir for at least a period of three months. So what this means effectively is that the United States has swept up all of the doses for uh, three months, meaning other countries will not be able to, to get this drug. But still, the move really harkens back to some of the tactics, ruthless tactics, some have said, uh, that we've already seen from the United States in snapping up personal protective equipment uh, back in the early days of the pandemic. We've had the worst response to the virus by far, but since we're a rich country, we can just shove aside the more responsible nations and hoard the only available treatment. Forget the at-risk people in other countries who caught the disease despite their best efforts. Let's waste these treatments on the idiots who think the virus is a Chinese, communist, Democrat hoax and who will go right back out without a mask as soon as they leave the hospital. This country's behavior over the last six months has been appalling, and people around the world have taken notice. We bully other nations, we're fiercely proud of our ignorance, and we bankrupt our own citizens when the only available drug could be sold at a price that everyone could afford. The government doesn't need to stand by and let Gilead get away with their profiteering. They could enforce legislation that would drastically reduce the price of treatment, but they won't. The line between corporations and the state has become so blurred in the past few decades that the distinction is no longer discernible. We are living under a regime dominated by corporations and the ultra-wealthy, and citizens of the United States are not the only ones suffering. How long will the rest of the world allow this writhing, hyper-capitalist death cult to rule international affairs? The pandemic has made a great many things clear, and the pricing of this new treatment is just one more example of the moral failure of the richest nation on Earth. 
I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this kind of content is supported by my patrons on Patreon. This type of video, while very important, is something that sponsors won't touch. In order to pay the bills and keep this channel running, I rely on AdSense revenue, sponsors, and donations from generous viewers. By producing explicitly anti-capitalist content, I lose out on both sponsors and AdSense. If you enjoy the kind of videos I'm producing and you're able to chip in even a dollar a month, I would greatly appreciate the support. You can find my Patreon page at patreon.com slash secondthought. I've also gotten a few requests to start a Discord, so if that's something you would enjoy as a Patreon reward, let me know in the comments below. You can check out my previous episodes by clicking the links on your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.